Do you have a small unused corner in your kitchen that's just begging for a makeover? You're gonna love today's video. I'm gonna show you how I transformed my sister's breakfast nook into a cozy, functional space with an amazing IKEA hack that I think is gonna blow your mind. Let's get started. Here's what my sister's breakfast nook looks like now. They just purchased this home last year. It's a mid-century home that was beautifully remodeled. However, this nook is not functional, so we are going to make it functional, cozy, and cute. It has this sort of awkward little pantry in it, so we're gonna have to incorporate that into the design. And my sister has a lot of things that she wants stored and put away. So our idea is to turn this into a breakfast nook with a built-in look bench. I think that's gonna add a lot of functionality to the space. It's gonna enable more people to sit in this space. We're going to use Ikea Nordly dresser units to create the bench because that's gonna be a great starting point. It's gonna add some storage with the drawers. There's gonna be a couple of niches on each side so we can extend the bench. I'm gonna make some DIY board and batten trim to make everything look built-in and stylish. As far as the mood board goes, my sister loves these bright, juicy colors, these sort of citrus inspired colors, yellows, oranges, greens, and blues. So I'm going to incorporate all these fun colors into the design with a beautiful crisp base of bright white to add some brightness and lightness into her kitchen. To start off this makeover, I am going to Ikea. I'm looking at the Nordly dresser units. These are modular units you can put together in all sorts of different configurations to make tall dressers, wide dressers. You don't have to buy the top or the bottom. So I'm just gonna buy the units themselves because without the bottom and the top, they're the perfect height around 19 inches for a chair seat. I'm also finding these outdoor cushions here at Ikea, and I think they're going to be the perfect size to add to the top of this DIY bench we're going to make. Plus, they're going to be nice and easy to keep clean. I am so lucky. I found everything in stock, and I got literally the three last smaller Nordly units like this and the very last two drawer units. Now I'm back at my sister's place and I am assembling all of these Ikea pieces. Just like anything Ikea, they're pretty straightforward to put together. Just follow all the directions, use a drill and get to work. I'm really happy with these Nordly units. They seem like they're nice and thick and well-made. So I feel like with the addition of some nice thick MDF on top, they're going to be a great base for a dining bench. I also love how they have the drawers. So my sister and brother-in-law are gonna be able to store all sorts of kitchen and dining essentials inside their bench. So I assembled three of the one drawer units and one of the two drawer units and now I'm just moving everything out of the breakfast nook and dry fitting these Nordly pieces. I'm removing the baseboard as well because I want these pieces to sit nice and flush against the wall because I want everything to look seamless and built in. I'm putting three of the small units on this side and then the one two door unit on the other side. Now I'm removing the door of this pantry and I'm removing all of the casing. We're gonna add some extra casing to the bottom so that we're able to shorten the door so it opens up over top of the bench. Next, I'm priming this entire wall. My sister's wanting all of the gray in our house to disappear. So I'm priming over all of the original gray that was here. And then I'm using a beautiful blue color called Ice Rink by Bear for the top third of this wall as well as all the rest of my sister's kitchen. And then I'm using a custom white color matched to their current existing trim on the bottom two thirds of the nook. That's gonna be the base of our DIY board and batten trim. Now my dad came over to help me do a few things. So we are attaching the Nordly units together on the side with some wood screws. And then we're turning them upside down and I'm adding a 3 8 inch thick piece of door stop trim on the front bottom and the back bottom of the units. The reason we have to do this is because when we extend the drawers all the way out, they kind of scrape the floor a little bit and that is definitely what's going to happen if you have an older home like this one where the floors aren't that even. So adding just a little bit of 3 8 
thick trim on the bottom is going to enable the drawers to glide nice and smooth. Now I'm taking my drill and some wood screws. We're attaching these to studs in the wall. And we're also attaching some scrap trim to the corner so that we can set these pieces of MDF on top. I bought some half inch, nice thick, sturdy MDF. My dad helped me cut it out so it fit the top of the units perfectly with a table saw. I also put a piece of trim on the left hand side for the tops to fit on. I put some trim in the niche here about four inches up from the floor. And then my dad helped me with a table saw cut out some extra scrap pieces of MDF to stick in here, put some baseboard on the front and it makes a really cute little niche that we can store recipe books in and extra kitchen supplies. Now I want these Nordly units to match this whole built in perfectly. So I am using a bonding primer, priming the drawer fronts of all of these, and then using that perfectly color matched white paint and just painting the tops of the drawers. I also added just a little piece of trim to this corner part. I made sure that the units were kind of pulled apart here at the corner so the drawers were able to open and close perfectly. I'm using my finishing nailer to nail those MDF pieces to the top of my Nordly units. Now I'm taking some primer and priming the top of the MDF. We also cut a piece of MDF for the side. This is actually an old Ikea shelf I had on hand I wasn't using. Pop that into the side to create another niche and I'm adding some three inch trim on the side of that. Some old baseboard my sister had in her garage on top of the bench like this and using my finishing nailer to attach everything and using some caulking to make everything look seamless. Now I'm taking some new casing that's a little bit thinner for around this pantry and I am cutting that with my miter saw and I'm nailing that in place. Now let's do some DIY board and batten trim. I'm using some baseboard and my level and my finishing nailer and applying that about two thirds of the way up the wall. I'm also making sure that I caulk all of the joints to make everything look nice and seamless. And then what I do is I measure the whole width of where I want my vertical pieces to go, decide how many I want, and then use a measuring tape to make sure that they're even. My sister is helping me put up this one on the long wall. And again, using my miter saw to cut the vertical pieces, they're just a three inch wide MDF casing that I'm using for the vertical pieces of this board and batten. I love this traditional look and what I think is neat is my sister has this mid-century home so there's mid-century elements in this kitchen but the dark kitchen cabinetry is rather traditional looking so this DIY board and batten is going to bring a little bit more of that traditional look into our kitchen and kind of marry those two design styles the traditional with the mid-century modern. Once I installed all of this trim and I caulked all of the seams, making them look nice and finished, I'm just using some more of that color matched white latex paint in a satin finish and painting all of the trim and the final coat on the top of the bench. After all the paint is dry, I am doing the finishing detail, like installing all of the outlet covers back on. So here's how this DIY bench turned out. I love the storage underneath. I really like that I took the time to paint these drawer fronts to make them match all of the rest of the trim work, the top exactly. And I think the niches on the side also turned out really well. This is actually my table that I had. It's an Ikea table that extends, but it was the perfect size for my sister. So I'm gonna play musical tables. I'm putting my old one back in my place and then giving her this one. Here's those Ikea outdoor cushions and I was able to perfectly fit six of these on top of this bench. I found some really colorful pillows at HomeSense and Amazon, and I'm placing them on the bench as well just to bring in all of those colors that my sister loves. I'll make sure to leave links to everything I used in this makeover down in that description box below. Since there's no chandelier here, this is a perfect place to put a nice big centerpiece. I love this faux wisteria branch that I found on Etsy. 
So as a reminder, here's how my sister's breakfast nook looked like before. And here it is now. I'm so happy with how this IKEA hack dining bench turned out. The Nordly units were perfect for this DIY. I would highly recommend them. They're sturdy and they're practical. Love how these custom niches turned out. Love how white and bright the space looks, but we have all of these juicy, amazing colors that my sister loves. It gives this rather dark kitchen so much more brightness, and I hope my sister and my brother-in-law love this space for years to come. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Let me know down in those comments below what you think of this breakfast nook makeover and this IKEA hack dining bench. I would love to know. My sister and brother-in-law love this space and I am so happy with how it turned out. If you wanna see another Ikea hack where I took Ikea over the fridge cabinets and turned those into a simple dining bench in my own kitchen, I'm gonna leave that video right up here.